Hello, hello, internet people. Um, I'm Jay, and you're watching DS Tech Media. I hope you're having a wonderful day, night, evening, morning, wherever you may find yourself. And today we're going to be doing another RSS news. Basically, in RSS news, we're going to be bringing you subjects that revolve around technology of course focusing on Linux and free and open source today we're going to be discussing the Engadget article that claims that Linux gaming is on Steam life support and we're also going to be looking at Joe Rogan having on the Minds CEO Bill Ottman. So Joe Rogan had Mind CEO Bill Ottman on and it was uh, it was very interesting. They uh, they talked about privacy concerns regarding Facebook and Instagram Twitter uh, I believe they, they talked about Joe Rogan's interview with Jack Dorsey and there was a lot of talk of free and open source and how it's relevant in the future and how Minds relies on free and open source software. Now if you don't know, Minds is a emerging social media Um, I believe it's supposed to be decentralized. Of course, I'd have to double check that after watching that and in preparation for this video, I went ahead and created a DS Tech Media Minds account. But uh, let's let's watch a little bit of the interview. There's all different layers of like what we use with your browsers your apps your operating system your food your you know government your energy like all of this technology has code right that's associated with it so and when you s open up your computer when you sign into a browser when you open up an app you are empowering that app that's how the apps of the world become huge monstrous corporations is because we all use them every day. Right. So if you switch from, you know, OS, Mac OS to like GNU Linux or like Debian or Ubuntu, if you use Brave or Firefox, if you, um, you know, DuckDuckGo is actually proprietary, which is annoying, but they are very privacy focused. And then there's apps, there's Minds, there's all sorts, there's other open source decentralized social networks out there that we can potentially federate with. There's really cool, new, interesting protocols like DAT and IPFS that are like more torrent style backend. So there's actually no servers in a giant way. So, yeah, um, a lot of name dropping there uh, GNU, Debian, GNU Linux. Uh, not familiar with DAT, um, however, IPFS. Uh, IPFS is a uh, pretty awesome technology that powers uh, DTube. Overall, it was a, a really good interview. I watched the entire thing, and I would definitely recommend you check it out. System called Steam. In September of 2013, Valve founder Gabe Newell gave a rare 20 minute presentation at LinuxCon. He called Linux the future of gaming, predicting that as the industry became more user driven and connected across both distances and devices, an open source foundation would be the only way to keep pace with coming innovations. With the standard proprietary operating systems powering Windows, Mac, and the consoles, Newell argued, all control over content pricing and change rested in the hands of a billion dollar corporations. Linux offered a chance for all players and developers to shape the marketplace. So 
Fast forward six years, Steam Machines buttered out as an idea, though Valve hasn't dropped support hasn't dropped its support for Linux. It maintains a Linux Steam client with 5,800 native games. And just last August, Valve unveiled Proton, a compatibility layer designed to make every Steam title run open source style. With Proton currently in beta, the number of Steam titles playable on Linux has jumped to 9,500. There are an estimated 30,000 games on Steam overall, so that's roughly 1 in 3, and Valve is just getting started. However, the percentage of PC players that actually use Linux has remained roughly the same since 13, and it's a tiny fraction of the gaming market, just about 2%. Linux is no closer to claiming the gaming world's crown than it was six years ago when Newell predicted the open source user-generated content revolution. And of course, they, uh, they mention Epic and how Epic is giving developers 88% of all sales, a handful of high-profile titles including Hades from Supergiant Games, Super Meat Boy Forever from Team Meat, and Journey from that game company were announced alongside the Epic Games Store, yeah. So yeah, I would say uh, Linux gaming is pretty closely tied to uh, to Steam, which which is a bit of a problem. Get your friend and your guy and your favorite YouTuber. And uh, Gardner, the Linux gamer, he he had some things to say about it as well. Sure, Valve and Steam and Proton have had an enormous impact on the Linux gaming landscape. One that arguably no other company can be compared to, but I think that's kind of where we're running into the issue. I think this is the real crux of the argument uh, of the, uh, the article, right? Whether it's the onslaught of trash on Steam or the, uh, or the Steam discovery bug that still is plaguing the platform reportedly to this day, or the archaic revenue split between developers and Steam, uh, Valve really have rolled out the red carpet to uh, allow any competitor to charge their gates. You know what I'm saying? They haven't done enough to build a good relationship with developers. Proton works best with games that have Vulkan support, right? Games that use Vulkan have just an inherent cross-platform uh, advantage than uh, something like DirectX would have. Games like uh, Doom Eternal, which use the Vulkan API, are probably not going to be available on Steam, which means we won't be able to take advantage of Steam Play with Doom Eternal. And the, it's also true for games like Metro Exodus, which uh, are exclusive to the Epic Store, at least for the first year. So Valve have built tools to allow game developers to publish their games for Linux transparently, yet many developers are leaving Steam for other platforms to begin with. So see, I'm not willing to say that Linux gaming is on a life support system called Valve, right? I can't say that because Linux gaming existed well before Steam came around. I'm I'm not going to say that Valve hasn't had an impact on Linux gaming, and arguably they have been one of the most, if not the most, influential um, companies in the world to have an impact on Linux gaming. But I am worried about the health of the Steam store. So I guess you could say that I'm more worried about Steam being the thing that needs life support. So I'd, I'd have to agree there. Steam has been awesome, and without Steam, you know, we probably, you know, I've done videos on the channel where I, I've tested uh, Path of Exile and I've got some other ones that I, I plan to, to test. I've also tested I think Deadlight using Proton. The, he mentioned uh, Metro Exodus being on Epic and how Epic doesn't support Steam um, support Linux I mean. Uh, I'm not sure that that matters because both of the Metro games that I have actually run natively on Steam. I installed them, I mean on Linux. Uh, I installed them through Steam, but I don't think they would necessarily have to come from Steam for me to play them, and they play very well. I, I hope he's wrong about people leaving Steam, because Steam does add a lot of ease to gaming on Linux, so... 
I really, really hope that Steam remains the, uh, the mega platform that it is. And I hope that it continues to uh, put development towards uh, DXVK, which is what Proton really is. So here is uh, here's my Steam library. Th this uh, this is inside, which is kind of like a modern day platformer. Runs via Steam Play. Uh, it's from the same people that made uh, Limbo which Limbo installs natively on Steam. It seems like they didn't take the time to port Inside. Of course, Inside is based on Unity. Uh, this game is, uh, I haven't tried it yet, it's Colot. Got it for free. It's running on Steam Play. Story about my uncle, uh, that's a native Steam game. Tomb Raider, native. Tyranny, Native, Wasteland, 1 and 2, Native. Deadlight worked very well with Steam Play. The point I'm trying to make here is that Steam makes it easy to get all of these games across Windows and Steam, which is something that we don't really have a alternative to. That's, that's uh, definitely something to be considered. Steam is definitely the lifeblood of gaming on Linux, unfortunately. I don't think there's any way to get around that. So I'd, I'd mostly have to agree with uh, Garner the Linux Gamer, which is to say that gaming on Linux wouldn't be dead without Steam, but it certainly wouldn't be where it is right now. So I'm really hoping that Steam remains the uh, go-to number one source for gaming on PC as, as a platform in general. So uh, that's all I got for you today. Uh, both those were pretty pretty cool stories. I'll add links to uh, everything in the description in the show notes, including a link to the TS Tech Media Minds account. Thank you for watching. I'm Jay, and I'll see you in the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe. That's what it is.